the man from down under with a little thunder, WWE and Pro Wrestling Hall of Famer, Bushwhacker Luke. And here something else comes from down under too. The Wrestling With Figs podcast with my mates Chris and James. you got to tune into this great podcast because Chris and James will give you all the inside info. Whoa! Yay! Welcome back to another episode of the Wrestling with Figs podcast. I'm your host, Chris Maddock, over in the West. Joining me over in the East is Bradley Perryman and James, the Alabama Slammer, Thomas. How are you, Jen? <laughs> g'day, g'day. Very good, Christopher. How are you? I just feel Funny. bad when, when the intro starts and it doesn't say Brad. All right. I, I, I kind of want to jump on this and I want to put it out to everyone and see who who we want to see as an intro video whether it's a wrestler or someone famous obviously from down under but see what we can do well, but, who, uh, who I think ourselves to down under otherwise there's only about four or five people we yeah, can ask to still alive. <laughs> um but uh you know what if, brad what we should do is reach out to cardona that'd be, oh. that'd be a good hit. yeah that would be a good hit i mean we could do and it when know, he comes comes here next year so he'll do it if the price is right yeah, I mean, we d- we don't have to pay if you see you next year if we just see him in the street, right? Well, if John Lucas <laughs> hey. Reyes can just twist his arm a little bit, uh, you know, you never know. Done. Just just buy the most oh, expensive yeah. piece of merch on his table, Bradley, and uh, just stick the microphone the microphone in his mouth. Oh, I, I might have paid like yeah. a bit too much for <clears> when I last saw him with autographs and whatnot, so I maybe might have to skip it next time. <laughs> yeah, yes, well, enough. uh we're back for another episode now. Uh, just to start us off, James, I know there's been lots, lots of people, lots of posts about Australia Post and uh, letting their customers down, and I think I've solved the problem. What is it? Well, I've figured out why people are losing their deliveries, why things are going so slow. It's because they're hiring rookies. Have a look at this guy who just happens to be working for Australia Post. <laughs> I saw that Batista. video. Batista, Batista yeah, working for Australian <laughs> Post. Uh, somebody in the group this week, I think it was in our group, shared the video of Batista on Neighbours. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it this morning while I was on the phone. It was so, it was it was good. so good because it was so bad. Yeah, um, yeah. But very, very funny. <laughs> uh, thank you to whoever shared that. It made my morning the other day. Yeah, it was a funny... Uh, Funny video. Good old Toadfish. I remember being out clubbing back in the day in Toadfish when he used to have the long, long hair and undercut. Remember that? Yeah. We used to see him out all the time. Off his chops, old Toadfish. So good good time. He, he had a good run, Toady, uh, getting the amount of money he would have got out of Neighbours over about 20 years. So well done to Toadfish. I think he's still there. I think he's still on there. Yeah, I think he – well, the show's finished now, right? So, Oh, is it? No, no, it's on – It's on. Um, not that I watch it. Full disclaimer, I don't watch it. But I'm pretty sure it's on like uh, it's not on Channel Ten anymore. It's on like one oh, of the. Okay, I thought no, they were ending it, but fair enough. Uh, it's dead and buried. Uh, I don't think so. Google it. It is, mate. It should be. Uh, yeah. if it isn't. How much do you want to put on that? Uh, I'm not a betting man, mate. I'm not a betting man. Did you have a bet on the cup today? Nah, I just said I'm not a betting man. Did you? Well, maybe you'd like to bet on the Melbourne Cup. It's the biggest sports race in Australia. Yeah, I regret nah, my bet be... today. Wouldn't even know who was in it, mate. Uh, I invested eleven dollars in my work sweep, and I won eleven dollars. So uh, you won last year too, didn't you? Uh, I don't know. I, I usually uh, have a few cheekies at work, but um, uh, I don't really bet much either. Just uh, I, I like to keep my money. I don't like to waste it. So you know what I can't stand is this is what I hate. Right, a lot of my mates are punters, and when you catch up with them, go to a pub or you go to a club or whatever it may be, and then they just disappear. Yeah. Yeah, where, yeah, where, where are the boys? Oh, they're at the bar. Oh, they're in the poker room. Oh, they're at the TAB. It's like, come on, boys. This is mm. this is crap. We, I hate we don't have pokies in WA. Really? So yeah, no, it's but they're banned. What? So uh, uh, really? Yeah. So at the casino, oh. there's uh, pokies, but not in uh, bars and clubs because because they're just an absolute cesspit of uh, people who just waste their life savings on them. So. Yeah. Um, even like 
my wife and I quite like going to the casino. I like might stay there. It's a nice big crown hotel where, where our local casino is, and it's not a bad spot to go at night. And there's heaps of shows and good pubs there. And you just see people in their like sixties and seventies at three o'clock in the morning, just like feeding the machines. You think far out, get a life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not good. Hey, yeah. Uh, let's move on to some figures. Let's talk figs um, and uh, community news. Or should we start with? Should we start community news? <laughs> yes, mate. This sounds like a plan. <laughs> or, or, I, I'm so uh, all over it. Now, Christopher, let me just say this, mate. We've got the great KG watching us live. So lift your game. No more mistakes. That was not no a mistake. More, no more time stamps. Let's get this done correctly. You with me, KG? He's with me. All right, let's go. Housekeeping. Subscribe to Wrestling for Figs podcast and please leave a five-star review. Uh, find us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast on Apple, Spotify, uh, and all the other all the other platforms. Um from all of us, thanks to anyone who has left us a, uh, a positive review. It's, uh, it means a lot. It helps us get the name out there, and it takes 30 to 60 seconds. So we appreciate, we really, really appreciate your time. Um, founder extraordinaire, Chris Maddock of Figs Down Under Community, the greatest community, the Down Under figure scene. Would you call it the figure scene? Collective uh, scene? I like to call it the Cool Kids Club. The Cool Kids Club, yes. Uh, where all the hot chicks hang out. Um, it's uh, a great community of guys and girls who uh, support one another with their with their secret little passions of collecting collectibles. Hey, and, James, uh, I want to tell you a very quick story. Um, yep. Well, first one, I last pod I said I was looking for the defining moments. Uh, Ric Flair, black robe, uh, loose figure. Yep. Within about 24 hours and 74 tags later in uh, sales posts, <laughs> I had uh, secured one. So that was good. Nice. I mentioned How'd you get it? So good work there. Alex Williams, great seller as well over in uh, Victoria. Uh, hopefully yeah, you're not right. too bad from the floods over there at the moment. And the yeah. uh, second one is I posted a few of my son's figs for sale and uh, the beard of knowledge, Steve Campbell, uh, reached out and said, oh, have a look at the whole lot and let's see if I can do something with you. And uh, made a good deal with Steve and uh, that gives my son some extra spending money over the summer holidays and uh, uh, really, really good person to work with, Steve. Uh, absolutely fantastic. If you ever buy and sell with him, he is as good as it gets. And there you go. That's the beauty of the figs down under the community, eh? Right there and then. Very good. Very good. Now, Chris, we get into some figure news. Bradley, how about you kick us off with uh, some Mattels or... AEWs, mate. I can see a few on your shelf there. Yeah, so I got a few here today, but uh, we'll start with the new release of uh, Elite Series 98. Wow. So they just released some images of that. Uh, you've got Big E, who comes with uh, Big E side plates on his belt, which I don't think has been done before apart from uh, in the Elite form. You've got Randy Orton, Demon Finn Balor, Mandy Rose in her NXT form. You've got Farouk. As Ron Simmons there, you got Rick Boogs, who that also is. has a chase, but apparently he also has a removable ponytail. So oh, no, he has short hair as well. That is that is the figure of the year. What a cracking figure. Rick, what's I nearly wore my, Rick, Rick, Rick Boogs? Boogs. I nearly Rick wore my Boogs. shirt off a Rick Boogs t-shirt that I bought after WrestleMania. Um, I love that. Because I felt bad for him because he's out with a long-term injury after he did his oh. knee at WrestleMania, so... Well, mate, uh, hopefully he, he can fall be. back on his he can fall back on his music career. He's a sensational guitarist. And his good looks. I uh, I he must be close to getting back though. You'd think so. Maybe Royal Rumble. Could be surprise entrance. But he um he looked like somebody who was gonna make a name for himself pretty quickly. So yeah. uh hopefully well, he hasn't, he hasn't, about him. Yeah, he hasn't been under the new Triple H banner yet, so we'll see how that goes if he does come back. Yeah, well, that's, no, a nice uh, that's a great one. Out of those, spread. Uh, which ones are you going to get? Uh, obviously, the Demon Balor is my number one, and then I will probably go with the Boogs. I'd like to get them all, but I'm going to try and limit myself uh, recently. And so. James, what do you reckon about uh, Randy Orton's legs? Uh, they're up there with Goldberg's legs. Absolutely rubbish. <laughs> Toothpicks. 
But look, look at look at, uh, look at Big E. That's a that yeah. is a great figure of Big E too. Perfect. Big E's got the tree trunks, and Randy Orton's yep. got the toothpicks. Even Farouk in the background there. Well, Orton's legs big. are nearly smaller than the female wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Very good. Come on, What's right. next, Brad? All right, moving on to WrestleMania 39 elites. We've got uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage. We've got uh, Dusty Rhodes, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, and The Rock with a, also a builder figure, Mean Gene. What a yeah, great cool. set. What um, a great what's, set. The, uh, what's the match from the Dusty Macho? What's, which WrestleMania is it? WrestleMania 6. Is that WrestleMania 6? Yep. Gee whiz, my memory is going. The yeah, um, and that, and War, uh, sorry, uh, Rock and uh, Hogan, that'll be 17. Yeah, or was it 17 or 18? Yeah, one of those two, 17 or 18. <laughs> legend no, versus I, legend, wasn't it? Yeah, very cool. And the build a figure main, Jane, um, very cool as yeah, well. Great figure. Chris, I'm going to ask you a question, right? Yeah. Macho, macho, macho man or macho king? What are yeah. you remembering more so, as Macho King or Macho Man? Macho King. Yeah, same. Yeah. Same. It's almost like I much prefer him as Macho King. When I see him as yeah. Macho Man, it's like, oh, yeah, I remember yeah. him that way, but Macho King he was always, I, like, the iconic moments were when he was carried out by the uh, people on the on – the, um, like the chariot sort of thing, and mm. he wore the crown and he hit Warrior yeah. with the scepter. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, like pro- pre- pretty much, my most iconic Macho Man moment is the hitting the warrior across the face with the scepter. A Royal Rumble. was that a Royal Rumble? Royal Rumble, yeah. It was a Warrior yeah. versus Slaughter, wasn't it? Well, the warrior versus when, Slaughter. Um, yeah. He lost the title yeah. and uh, set up the Warrior Macho Man feud, and said then Slaughter fought Hogan at WrestleMania, didn't he? After that, yes, yep, yep. No. So, uh, that's that's probably my peak childhood yeah. memory of, of any yeah. wrestling. And I used to love the Royal Rumble so much that um, because I think the other thing was when you hit him with a scepter, the scepter sort of smashed as well. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, was, it was even more um, sort of captivating that, uh, you know, holy shit, he actually really belted him with that. Like, um, <laughs> very cool. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. Good memories. Good memories. Anything else, Bradley? Uh, what about moving moving on? We're still with uh, Mattel. We're going to the Mattel Creations Ultimate Edition Coliseum Collection Two Pack. So we yeah, got wow. Hogan, and then we got Funk. So we got Hogan. Uh, I guess it's a remake of his original L, uh, white shirt LJN, and then yeah. uh, Terry Funk is a remake of his Legends Elite Series Two. So what I notice here, Bradley, if you look on the back of the card, they've got the Sergeant Slaughter from the. Um... Uh, San Diego Comic Con exclusive from yep. correct me if I'm wrong, 2021. No, uh, would have been this year, no, no, no it was last, year, year. last year, last year, yeah, yeah so it was last year. yeah. So that's interesting. So that's a part of so that's a part of a set, maybe. I'm guessing so. I'm, I'm guessing this is a, a future new set of Ultimate Edition um figures they're releasing yeah, because this, cool. year, this year was the no holds barred. Yes, yeah. that is correct. Yes. Which, uh, yes. Thank you to Matt DeMayo. I have mine on the way. Uh, thanks to Chris. I don't. Oh, well. Just sad, Moving on. Hey, and what did you say before the show started, mate? Uh, you know, you just got to just watch your spending and just relax a bit. You know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah you mate. Know. I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Yeah. It's a tough times out there for the old fig hunters. Yes, uh-huh. uh, you know what? You know what? On that, I'm I'm noticing a lot of people selling. Hopefully, everyone's doing okay. There's a lot of, um, you know, not just one-off figures, but uh, complete sets, and yeah. you know, hard to find pieces. So hopefully, everyone's doing okay. Not really, not feeling the pinch too much. But I guess you know, at the end of the day, you've got to do what you've got to do, right? It's a hard one yeah. because um, obviously collectibles are the first thing to go if you're in a money squeeze, but. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it's good for people who aren't in a squeeze because you can pick up things at a reasonable price. Hundred uh, percent. I've, I've had a feeling though for a while that the market was at its peak, and I thought that at some points, uh, a lot of things were overpriced, like uh, green card Hasbro's. Green card Hasbro's. Do you remember our old friend in Japan who sold about yeah, four thousand yeah. green card Hasbro's over about a three month period? And then people, yep. they went from being $100 from the Japanese seller 
and all of a sudden they were at six, seven hundred US because the collectibles yeah. market exploded during COVID. And Is that, yeah, yeah. they're not worth that much. Like they're they're yeah. not that rare. So, yeah. Um, yeah. especially when you think a mail away Hogan doesn't go for that much more. So, yeah, yeah. I know what I'd be and buying. It, and it's not the greatest figure of all time either. Anyway, hope everyone's okay. Yeah. And then last Any one other? we've got here, yep. AEW Jazzwares. We've got the King of Hearts, Owen Hart, AEW oh. Ringside exclusive. <laughs> Jesus. So wh- when was the last When was the last Owen Hart figure released? Is anyone uh, The Blue Blazer. Yeah. So uh, since BCA. then. Yeah, yeah. Since then, this is our first Owen Hart. They've ruined him with his bloody face. Oh, oh my goodness. Man. Honestly. No, that's that's what he looks like. Oh, but, no, come on. Come on. The best, the best head in this picture here is the one with the headband. The one uh, yeah, where it's just in place. That's that's not that good, Chris. Come on. Yeah. Uh, does he look a bit Cobra Kai ish? Yeah. 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 I can see that. Well, I uh, ordered that one, so hopefully it comes better than that. Because um, yeah, I've, I've got one on the way. Very good. Good luck to very you. Very good. That's all yeah. for me for that. Nice. All right. Well, I'll, ju- I'll jump into uh, one of my favourite toy lines: he- heels and faces. Now, uh, Series 2 pre-orders went live. I think it was last Friday or Saturday. How did you Uh, guys go? Did you get get any? Friday morning. Yep, I've put in an order for Blue Strap, Andre, and King Kong Bundy. Nice. Nothing from me. Nothing from you? All right. Well, I I will. will... How much do you reckon it cost me to get Blue Strap, Andre, and King Kong Bundy shipped to Perth? Uh, 40 bucks. No, total, total figures and shipping. Ah, oh, uh, I don't know, $120? Bucks? $193. Jesus. Wow. So, good to see the US dollars doing really well at the moment. Wow. That's so that's 40, bucks, shipping, yeah. 40 bucks a fig and then another 40 bucks ish for shipping. So 120 US converts. Wow. Yeah, pretty high. Yeah, that's um, that's pretty big. Now, did you see him reveal his uh, prototype of the one-man gang? Well, I haven't seen this, but I love it. Oh, it is um, incredible. Really, really good. Really good. You know, we were talking off air. <clears throat> Zombies copped his um, haters, and, you know, you could argue rightfully so or right for, or, or not. Um, but he seems to be uh, having a different approach with his um, communications with customers, wouldn't you say, guys? Well, he says I love you on every single uh, social media post, uh, which yeah. is nice. There's a bit more gratitude coming from coming from the zombie man. So uh, yeah, I, I think he's more thankful for what he's been dealing with, and you know the the support he's been getting as well. So I think he's got I, yeah. I changed a little him, bit. I emailed yeah. him about something uh, with my order, my last order, and um, he was very helpful. And uh, pointed me in the right direction. I think it was so I didn't get tracking. And I said, oh, I just wanted to know about the tracking. And then he said, oh, I'll send you a link. And then I never got another email. And I sent him another email saying, look, I didn't get a link. And he just sent me the tracking number. But he was very pleasant with me. I know some people haven't had the same experience. And um, hopefully in the next day or two, I'll receive finally receive my last of my zombie figures, which are coming from the US, which uh, have taken... Three and a half months to get here, <laughs> but they just scanned in Perth the other day, so uh, uh, very exciting. What's, um, I actually checked my my receipt, my email receipt, and I've got three um, Jeff Jarrett's. I'm pretty sure I've got three Jeff Jarrett's coming coming along. You only got we only got one for me. Yeah, I only got one for you, so I must have bought two for myself that I can't remember. But what, any any word when they're coming out? Being released? Uh, they said that they're en route to to Zombie Now. Where'd you see that? Uh, he posted it. He said they've okay. been shipped from the factory. Okay, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I'll have to have a look. Anyway, I'm looking forward stay, to getting that figure. Stay tuned for a picture of him sitting on the boxes just before they get released. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, it could hey, not be uh, great work. James, now, what about, what about yeah. the Bushman? You going to talk about the Bushman? I'll get to that. I'll get to that. I wanted to talk about uh, another one of our favourites first, which is uh, Junk Shop Dog, um, Aussie icon, Junk Junk Shop Dog, Porsche. And geez, his name escapes me. Adam, Adam, yep, Adam, yeah, Adam. God, sorry, Adam. I'm just uh, a bit tired tonight. Uh, Adam and Porsche are doing great work with this. Uh, what have you done to our pictures tonight, Chris? They're all blurry. Uh, 
this is how you sent them to me, mate. So oh, really? when you send when you send me blurry pictures, this is only your pictures, by the way. Brad's were fine, but when <laughs> you you send them to me and you send them to me so late when we're organising the show that by the time I realise they're blurry, we don't have time to replace them. Yeah. So what are you going to do, mate? You're just going to have to make up the names. You, you, you old you old fellas and your technology. There's nothing. Yeah. Well, James, James is still using a, a, a Commodore 64. The, um, yeah, holding the button down. Nothing is going to be funnier here than James trying to make up the names of these Sofubi wrestlers. Go for it, James. Oh, I'm not even going to try. Davy Boy, <laughs> Davy Boy, that's about it. The other two, I'm not even going to try. But, uh, if you're looking for some uh, great Sofubi figures, support uh, local, support Junk Shop Dog, and get online and purchase them right now. They're, they're, just, um, they're, 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 the, they're the quiet achievers, aren't they? They just keep plugging away. There's no complaints about what. it. I'm in a couple of smaller LJN groups uh, or sort of uh, just different collectible groups and uh, people are really impressed and pop. They're very popular, especially in the yeah. US. So yeah. uh, good work, well, that, that, that's, the, that's the demographic that they're targeting, right? The, the Yeah. You know, the, yeah. Awesome. Awesome stuff, Junk Shop. Um, now, I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, I saw Michael Jordan, not the Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan from Australia. He posted in the in the Figs Done Under group from Hasbro, the, Has, uh, the Hasbro Sergeant Slaughter from the G.I. Joe line. It looks like an elite-style figure, but that's a great-looking um, uh, Sergeant Slaughter. I think it's better, better than any other <coughs> Slaughter they've released of late. And this so one's is that from, one coming out? You can buy it now on the Big Bad Toy Store. I don't know if it's a pre-order or not, but for $34.99 US, uh, you can grab one of those right now. Oh, I believe cracker. I believe I saw this on sale uh, at Pop Culture on their website as well. So I mean, oh, there you go. They're local, so you might be able to get it through there. Yeah, support local. We're all about that. We're all about that. Now, the next toy line I wanted to before we get into Mark Bushy, guys, I wanted to uh, give a little shout out. And I've got to be quite um, selective with what I say here because nothing. I don't want to reveal too much. But our good friend Sean and G from over in China. We all know he's releasing his own toy line, um, hopefully in the first quarter of next year or, or if not after. Now, he has asked me to mention something tonight, and basically the way he's going to release his toy line is he's taken the the, the route of the trading card uh, concept. And again, I'm just going to choose my words carefully because I don't want to I don't want to reveal too much here. But basically, there's going to be a chase variants and then a one off, um, really special figure of one of the released figures. And again, I can't say too much. Um, I've actually been helping him with, along with a few other people, and he'd like your, your, you guys to get on board, but helping him out with a couple of renders, giving my input, um, my expert opinion. And uh, he's doing a great job. He's working really quietly behind the scenes and he's, um, yeah, putting a pretty solid business plan together and, and planning his attack. So watch your space for Sean and G. His own toy line coming out. Can't tell you much more than that, but um, we'll, we'll we'll share with you guys once uh, we know more. Do you know what I want, James? I want a Sean NG figure. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he can. I'm sure he can uh, arrange that. I will. I will say this. I will say this. Sean NG will be releasing not in a tag team set. So they're all individual figures, but he'll be releasing the first tag team set. Uh, with his first line, so what's this space? Um, just while that- we're on the topic of uh, independent toy lines, uh, I did post in the group as well. Asylum Toys uh, will be uh, building some Remco style figures. Uh, they've signed uh, with the Legend of Doom to have the Legend of Doom released as their first um, release. There's going to be five figures in the set, uh, but I'll post more when I know. Um, I am obviously an admin over there on the Asylum, so I do get privy to a few things, but um, they look pretty cool. Uh, the other one is Hastel Toy. You see Hastel Toy's doing figures. Yeah, for uh, yeah. who have you got? The dog so he's got the Godfather and he's got Savio Vega. Um, and so Hastel, Mitch Rolston, great guy, really, really good person to buy from. Is he? Yeah, Mitch is fantastic. Um, yeah, right. I've bought uh, quite a few um, Hasbros from him in the past. And uh, always happy to ship overseas. Always charges you cost for shipping. Never tries to inflate. Um, yeah. And very good, very good communicator. And then obviously he became a bit more popular and famous from his um, connections to the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast um, because uh, what do they call him? The Hustle Man. 
so um, the Huckle Man, and he's opened his second store now in Ohio, I think. So um, he shut uh, one down though. I don't know. I don't know whether the UX, the New York one's still open or not. No, I think he shut it down and they moved it all across because it was bigger and better for his liking. So. Well, you've got to think the rents in New York would be huge. So, oh, uh, it would make a lot of sense. Oh, good massive. one. So, lots, massive. lots of cool stuff on the independent toy scene. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, a lot of great stuff. So, uh, excited to see what's what's ahead. You know, and I guess in a you know economically, it's a scary time, but it's great to see these guys such as Sean, Sean and G and um, uh, junk shop dog and zombie and all the rest of them that are having a, a real good crack supporting our addiction. So well done. And better than Mattel. Now, better than Mattel. Better than Mattel. Um, now here we go. The Bushman has done it again. I don't know where. <laughs> I do not know where this guy finds his stuff, but he's found himself an old school. What would you call that, Chris? Like an old school no diary, no book. Yeah, yeah, auto, yeah, autograph book. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, right. And he's got, I think there was, there was what, over 100 um, vintage uh, wrestlers. And the smart thing is he, he wrote their name and date. Oh, genius. Yeah, yeah very good. Absolutely genius to date and name every autograph. And you could trace it back to whatever show they were at that day. Yeah. Uh, really, yeah. really cool. And uh, one thing I really liked was seeing a lot of wrestlers who passed away. Like Bruiser Brody was in there. I really like the Bruiser Brody uh, autograph, which obviously is uh, incredibly hard to find these days. Yeah. Quick question. If you're a Bruiser Brody fan, how come you didn't grab um, the Heels and Faces one? That looks brilliant. I just don't need it, mate. I've got, I'm running out of space as it is. So, yeah, like, I didn't need the Andre, but I just reckon, reckon it looks really cool. I was a bit annoyed yeah. that um, there was going to be black strap and blue strap, and I would have preferred to have got the black strap Andre, but um, it wasn't available on the pre-order. Is that is that going to be like a – is that just a chase or is that going to be an exclusive? I, I have no idea. I just I just didn't want to miss out on the blue, and I didn't know. Yeah. You just never know how fast these things will sell out, like the yeah. retros. Yeah. You know, the retros, you think, oh, I could wait a couple of days to order and then all of a sudden they're gone. Yeah. And then Ring is selling them for 10% more. Yeah, yeah. Um, last thing from me, guys, is for, uh, community events. So for those that are uh, a part of the Figs Down Under community, a good friend and the beard of knowledge, as we like to call him, Steve Campbell, he has created an announcement thread that will list all the fantastic stores and upcoming markets in, in every single state. Steve's a bit of a traveler. God love him. He go, gets gets around, gets around the world. He uh, live in the dream, Steve. So he has seen some uh, amazing stores and been to ama- uh, some some cracking markets. So he'll be listing those and he'll he'll keep updating that. So if you go to our announcement thread and if, if, if there's a store that you know of that isn't on there, write it down or make, leave a comment, I should say, and uh, Steve will, will update that. So uh, have a go. I'm actually heading to Melbourne on Sunday and I'll be heading to Queensland in two weeks, for two weeks. So uh, I'll be looking for some stuff to do as well. Are you going to go to Go Figure? Uh, depends, mate. I'm actually going to catch up with um, our good friend Johnny Watson yeah. while I'm down there, uh, but I'm over in his area. I think that's really far from from where Go Figure is. So, mm. Mm. so I'll be, I, won't I'll be... Jeff. I won't tell Jeff that you blanked him. <laughs> no, it's not not at all, Jeff. If I can get there, I definitely will. Anything else from you guys? No, that's all, mate. We should move on to Merch Perch. Merch Perch. Dude, I went down to the shops to pick up some fruit and veg. I couldn't help myself. I went down to the toy aisle. you never believe what I got. What'd you get? What'd you get? I got some figs. What'd you get? What'd you get? I found some figs. Now... Bradley, yes. What'd you buy? Uh, not a lot of things. Cut a couple things. I got to start with me at my cards that I got. So I Ooh. cherry cherry collectibles did some breaks uh, quite a while ago, and they had some leftovers that they put on their eBay site. So I decided to buy some uh, what they call the rookie cards of some Aussie wrestlers. So you got Zion Quinn and Duke Hudson. Cool. Ah, that's Zion Quinn, a former NRL player. Yep, former Dragons and Brisbane Broncos NRL player, and, I believe. So and Raiders played for the Raiders. And Raiders, as well. yes, yes, that is correct. So decided to get them while they're you know they're they're in the the, the city and the the country. So keep them in. How's he going? Collection. How's he going? It, uh, 
He's doing. I think he's he's not doing a lot of shows. He's doing, I believe, a lot of the the what they call level up now, which is like the the development to the development NXT show or something. So I think he's doing a bit of matches here and there, but there's not a lot going for him. So I think think I think he's still in the learning stages of wrestling. I guess. But is, is he going to make it? Or does that mean they're investing in him and he's learning? Or what does that mean? I don't know. So he's had his he's had his um debut on SmackDown before against Sheamus, and I think he's had one on Raw. I could be wrong, but um, there's no. I think he's still in development. He's probably just going to continue there for another year or so until someone really wants to do something. So there was actually yep. some NXT releases today, which I don't think they had names to him yet. So he could be one of them. Who knows? Fair enough. Oh, very good. And uh, did you buy something else? Looks like a t-shirt, Brad. What'd you buy? Yes. Yeah, so um, some people might know this guy. Some people won't. So Robbie Eagles, he's an Aussie wrestler that has been in New Japan pro wrestling and is currently touring with pro, uh, PWA um, pro wrestling Australia at the moment. So I just saw this oh, on cool. eBay for cheap and it's like, I really, really enjoy him as a wrestler. I saw him at World Series Wrestling and kind of just grew, grew as a fan. So I was like, I'm going to grab this while I can. What about the Aussie, uh, nice. Aussie rifle uh, there? Love a, good, <laughs> love a good wrestling T-shirt, and I love the fact that when you see people uh, out and about and you just give them a nod, you're like, yep, yeah, I like your shirt. Uh, yeah. You ever get that? <laughs> yeah. You wear a, yeah, I've got this blue Macho Man T-shirt, and every time I wear it anywhere, there's always one dude who just gives you a look and goes, yep, yeah, that's awesome. And <laughs> you've got to you you take a photo. you got to take a photo with a Macho Man shirt on. Please, Chris. The other funny one for me is there's a parent at my school who always wears an All Elite Wrestling shirt all the time. And every time he wears it, I just go, yeah, right on, mate. <laughs> yep. Uh, I like it. Hey, um, I had some issues uploading the images, so I'm going to talk to my merch perch because uh, the images that I was going to show weren't formatting correctly. It's been the fr- most frustrating part of my day today. Uh, but the things I bought this week, I actually had a massive mail week. I picked up the Macho Man um, from the Ring Announcer Mattel Creations set. Uh, I picked up the um, Ric Flair Black Robe Loose Defining Moments from Alex Williams. Thank you, Alex. And Jacob Benet uh, from Queensland sent me a three-pack of elites, including the British Bulldog. I think it's Elite 94 with the soft goods flag. Uh, oh, cool. Stacey, Keeb- Stacey Keebler, James's favourite wrestler. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, legend figure. Uh, thanks, yep. Brad. Yeah, that one that you're holding there. Um, yeah. Pretty cool figure. The only thing is, when you put – so I've already opened mine up. When you put the glasses on her uh, as a display figure, they're it weird. kind of makes it look they're... a bit stupid and weird. Yeah, yeah so they're very uh, I know in the – How dare in, you? In the Raw uh, episodes, she had the, like, sexy glasses, the librarian look. But when you put it on her as a figure, it kind of makes her look stupid and nerdy. So um, uh, kind of weird. And I also picked up the legends from the US, legends Farouk and Bradshaw. Uh, they came this week. And in that uh, pile, I also got a nice Rikishi 8 by 10 autograph. Oh, nice. uh, and the Hulk Hogan Ultimate, um, the one that goes with the Mr. T. So, oh, cool. uh, yeah, been a big week of mail. And I've got another parcel from the US that's due tomorrow. So... Hopefully, some more to share on the next pod. So that um, have you got your no holds barred yet? Uh, look, it's a touchy subject. Look, Matt, if you're <laughs> watching, you know. Look, I'm getting the runaround. He's giving me the runaround. I reckon he might have just ducked the fleed the country. No, uh, Matt's <laughs> well, got I'll it ready. Tell you, I'll tell you a second. I'll tell you where it is. Hold on a sec. Oh, he's not got one there, is he? Oh yeah. No, nah, just kidding, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's hard racing for a second then. Thanks, man. He's, uh, no, Matt's uh, had a couple of days of busy days at work, so he's going to post it tomorrow, which is fine. As I said to him, I'm in no rush. I'm just looking forward to getting it and rubbing your face in it when I get it. So. <laughs> no, but I've been loving seeing him uh, land down. I know which is why we've called the show No Holds Barred. It's uh, it's not the actual figures that uh, blow me away with that that set. It's just the the box, the art, yeah. the, the way they're put together. It's just, just, did you get one, There's bro? something really cool about Sonny Liston as well. Yeah, I I, th- I believe I got one with Dean Paris, so I believe I've got one coming eventually. So I don't know when. It's just on the Sunny right. Liston. Is that his name? Isn't it Zeus? 
No, nah, no, nah, Sonny Liston's a, a um, old school boxer. What's his? What's Luce's real name? I just know him as Debo. Yeah. I'm going to Google it right now. I thought it was Sonny. Hang on. I, I might be getting confused here. Sonny Liston is who uh, Muhammad Ali knocked down. Tommy, in, uh... Tommy Lister Jr. Tommy Lister, not Sonny Lister, Tommy Lister. So, uh, yeah, close enough. So uh, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's pretty good. That's I don't right. think many people would have known Zeus's real name. Yeah. We all had to see that. Yeah, there's a bloke on the ground. That's Sonny Liston. Yeah, that's what that's I meant. That's yeah. what I was talking about. <laughs> so uh, anyway, as I was saying about my good friend Tommy Lister, uh, there was something just really imposing about him that uh, made you think, "Holy crap, this guy is a freak!" Monster. So I yeah. might go back and watch that. Hey, James, what, what did, what's on your merch perch this week, mate? Uh, my merch perch was uh, Lee Dowsett, uh, who picked himself up a WWF Hasbro uh, mint and sealed ring. <laughs> <laughs> no, very nice. There's nothing very, better. Very cool. there's, there's no better box art than that. Don't you agree, Chris? That is the best. The best there is. The best the, there you don't see many people buying those these days. No. Probably a couple of years no. ago, but just not now. Do you know, in 2016... I won a uh, sealed ring in a Raz in an American raffle group, and it was valued at the time at a hundred US. So it was a hundred dollar that raffle. So I won it, and then they got a quote for shipping. It was like seventy bucks US, and I was like, ah, oh, I don't need a sealed ring in box. And I sold it for sixty five US wow. to some other guy, and now they're selling for like four five hundred. Yeah, wow. Didn't you? Uh, was it you that bought? Um, the soundbar ring. Yeah, oh, I bought it from Brett Amos. Yeah. That was mint and everything, and they ripped it open. At it was custom. the most minty sealed ring you've ever seen. And customs opened the box because and they were worried about the, ba- the batteries in the uh, soundbar. And he sold it to you for right. a bargain. Yeah. He sold it to me for a bargain, and I was going to keep it in box. And then I ended up building it with my son and got some replacement stickers. And uh, put it together. So now it's my display ring. I sold my old display ring. What? So, why did you get new stickers? Were the ones just uh, they walked. They walked in the box over right. thirty years. So uh, right. they just it wouldn't have looked any good with the um, originals on there. Yeah. So. But just in all seriousness, going back to my merch bags, I haven't purchased anything this week, but I did share in the group my uh, card sets that I've been collecting over the last uh, six months. I don't know if you saw that, but that's been a, that's been a lot of fun. That's all I'm really after at the moment. Yeah, I've been buying two. a lot of AFL cards as well at the moment, but uh, yeah. you guys won't give me any support there. Hey, Brad, what did you find <laughs> as members merch perch? Uh, I got a Levi Ellers. So he had a custom 18-inch by 18-inch scale ring made for himself so Jeez, he's uh, done a good deal th- that. this is this is unbelievable so he he i think he ordered this from overseas so what he it is got an aluminium frame fabric mat and skirts he pressed the wcw logos on everything himself uh it's got metal posts it's got cross cables underneath the ring for tension and then he's done the wood flooring all himself like this is wow. this is unbelievable that'd weigh a bit hey I, it would, but it just purposely just like look look at Goldberg and and Hogan in that ring. Like yeah, the scale yeah. it seems to be good for what the WCW rings were, but um yeah, I that's unbelievable though. Yeah, it's awesome, that's really awesome. really cool, very nice. Uh, now my members merch perch. Uh, I actually went and checked the thread this afternoon, James, but you changed the threads over. So there's not a lot of posts yeah. on the new thread. I couldn't find the old thread. It's making my life difficult. But I found this from Robert, Robert Vailer, uh, a nice WCW tag team, uh, Nasty Boys, from <laughs> the – what's this line called? Who, remind me. Uh, not Bendy. What are they called? Uh, what are they called? San Francisco Toy Makers, are they? That's the one. And uh, the Nasty Boys with the green shirts – and that card looks absolutely pristine. Yeah. Right. How, ugly, how ugly is that Jerry Sags' head? <laughs> yeah, Sa- Sags didn't do so well. Knobs looks pretty good. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So, wow. Very, very cool. And uh, Robert Vailer, I would say he'd be one of the biggest collectors in Australia. Oh, he's got a cool um, room, hasn't he? Looks awesome. He's got a great setup. Very good. All right. Shall we get on to what's online, fellas? Let's do it. Let's go. Did you see what was online? What? What's online? 
Some bloke selling some LJN figures on eBay. What's he asking? He's asking too much. Well, did you make an offer? Make an offer. You can't make an offer. It's an auction. Well, just slide into his DMs. Maybe he wants to let them go for less. Maybe he's just trying to whet your appetite. Well, I don't know. We'll just make an offer. I can't make an offer. It's an auction. Well, they just slide right in to the DMs. What else is online? Oh, there's so much stuff. There's so much stuff online. All right, let's kick it off. I'm, I'm happy to go first, boys. Hey, Bradley, I just want to ask you, if this is your, what, your third show? Yep, third show. What's your favourite segment so far? Oh, I, oh, I do love a good uh, Q&A, but it just depends on yep. what gets asked, I guess. So um, that that, and I do like enjoying this what's online paper. Ah, there you, you go. Know what you're going to get. A cracker. It's a cracker. Well, seeing as the show is uh, called No Holds Barred, I thought I'd uh, look up the original No Holds Barred VHS. And to my surprise, I found one online that was in really good condition. It's already it's been used. But the shell clan was really good. The video, the 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 um the artwork, the paper, whatever you want to call it, was all in good nick. One hundred and ninety nine dollars. Jeez, yeah, couldn't believe it. And I watched this on eBay, and the seller sent me um an offer of a hundred and hundred and sixty, I think, from memory. But uh, I didn't. Uh, do, you, do you reckon DVDs will go up like this in due course? No, no, no way. You don't reckon? I don't know. Why? Think. Uh, everything's gone digital. No one cares. There's a different different generation. I had this conversation with a bloke uh, who's in his late twenties about collectibles, and he's and I said, oh, you know, some people will reckon that the next big thing for collectibles is going to be Apple products, so original Apples, iPhone Apple one, uh, iPod, yeah. original iPods, all that sort of stuff. Especially when they stop being made. And um, he said, yeah, but my generation, we don't care. He goes, we don't care about any of that stuff because we just move on to the next one. And he's everything's digital. They said, oh, well, you know, if you've got an Apple phone that's an iPhone 1, well, no one cares if they've got the iPhone 1 because they want the newest version. So it's an interesting, so NFT, uh, interesting way NFT, of thinking. NFTs for those sort of, uh, those sort of collectors. Mm. Uh, next up here, now this is, this is a, a set I want to add to my, um, my uh, album. Now, this is the uh, not, uh, WWF 1991 Classic Trading Card Set. And this is a set that had um, Undertaker's rookie card. You know, the blue background? Uh, that's not the Undertaker's rookie card, James. No, 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 but that's the album. So it comes with the original album. The rookie card the is the playing card in the playing card no, set. No, no. It, it is. I've got four of them. They're all mint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, but that, that's on eBay now for 110 bucks. Buy it now. Uh, and last but not least for me, I've got a 1989 Tops. This is a cool card, actually. A 1989 Tops Teenage oh, Mutant wow. Ninja Turtles card signed by all four turtles. I'm assuming the people that uh, uh, did their voices. This is graded <laughs> by or authenticated by BGS, and this is on sale now for buy now for 470 bucks. That's a good price. Yeah, that's awesome. It's an awesome card too. Now I've, I've got a few. Card. I've got a few. Um, uh, what do you call them? Cells, cartoon cells. Yeah. So if you if you find a cell that's got all four turtles on it, they're astronomical, like ridiculously priced. So I imagine something like that would be worth something in the future. My favourite thing about that is you had to assume that it was the voices that signed it, not the actual turtles. <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> How do they hold the pen? <laughs> <laughs> well, they could they could eat pizza and drive cars and skateboard. I'm sure they can hold a pen. Now, James, I've got to tell you, mate, when I was putting this all these images together, I reckon Brad's outdone you this week. He's got some oh, really? Stuff. Oh, Brad. These are, these, are first, Brad? These, these are some random finds. We'll go with the uh, the good old vintage Mad Magazine Australian uh-huh. issue with Hulk Hogan. So I, 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 I read I read a few Mad Magazines um, when I was I was a bit younger. So just coming across this randomly on eBay, I was like, wow, it's a decent price. It's, yeah, it's in Australia. I mean, if someone's – it's not in great condition. But uh, if someone's just yeah. interested to see what it's like, then go ahead, go okay. by that. I think it was the uh, Mad Magazine as a kid. I used to love the back page. Oh. Used to fold yeah, it, and it, it fold it. In the, yeah. yeah, that was. Big. I think that was a nineteen eighty six release or something. So it's wow. Yeah, it, it's it's old for me, but probably not for you guys. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, I was eighteen. 
Moving on, moving on to the next one. Uh, we've got a bushwhacker. Sh- so obviously, this is a size small. So Chris, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to fit into this. Um, <laughs> but anyone who likes a vintage wrestling shirt, who has a kid or something that you want to pay nearly 200 bucks for a bushwhacker <laughs> t-shirt, yeah, go right ahead. But uh, it's just something pretty cool to come across. How good's the uh, tagline? Bloody lovely, tell your mother. <laughs> <laughs> You've got good eyes there, Chris. Bloody it's lovely. Written yeah, it's written on the title, James. Oh, it doesn't Tell you what, uh, you're going beautifully tonight, James. Oh, uh, no, mate, it's late. It's late. Now, I thought I'd have a quick look at elites that are around, uh, that are available, and looking at things that are older, th- some things that are um, at a good price, uh, the first one I brought up was um, Diamond Dallas Page, Legends. Uh, now, I don't actually understand how this pricing works of 75 to 85. Oh, I but... can explain it to you, mate, if you want. Oh, how does that work? Okay, so lowest price with uh, – I've noticed this with MASH toys on eBay. Lowest price is normally uh, not mint packaging, and then the highest price right. is normally your mint packaging. Oh, beautiful. So, so um, this figure was, for a long time in the US, very hard to find, and then all of a sudden there was about 4,000 of them at their knockoff Ollie's and other stores like that. But yeah. – um, Really cool, uh, Legends Elite. It's available locally, and you no, know, to get that imported from the US, you're probably looking at a minimum of sixty to seventy bucks. So, um, very cool. Uh, I Is that like that expensive? one. Is that expensive? 80 well, you get twenty bucks for the figure and thirty bucks to ship it. So, no, but I mean, he's uh, asking, oh, I suppose, but yeah, right. right. I reckon that's probably about about cost. It's a great uh, figure. One, this one's uh, at auction, so it's super cheap. It's the Hornswoggle Elite Collection. Uh, now, everyone loves a bit of Swoggle, and uh, this figure, as part of the bigger DX set, is very, very cool. And it's only at fifteen bucks at the moment, so it's still got plenty of time. But uh, get on that, that. and uh, that Equinox cool. Dreams. You have a strange name for an eBay account, but uh, good luck to you because I reckon you've got to get it. I reckon that'll end up selling for close to a hundred bucks. There you go. Yeah, well, and last but not least is I love this figure, except for the fact that it's super heavy for what it is. Uh, the Gold Dust, uh, I think it's Series 6, uh, mint in box for 65 bucks. That's cheaper than buying a Legends Elite. I reckon that's a good investment. Uh, uh, Dustin Rhodes, great wrestler, uh, bizarre gimmick, and oh. uh, very, very cool. Yeah, very, very so, bizarre gimmick. Now, the only thing I don't like about this figure is the robe is like hard plastic. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, yeah a bit weird. So uh, Chris, for that um that horn swoggle, I've just jumped up to a uh, good old thirty one dollars for you. So. Oh, there you go. Good old <laughs> And uh, don't you love when somebody uh, somebody posts? Remember who was it? Somebody posted a link to an eBay account or an eBay posting. And then a few other people got a bit stroppy because they thought they were going to get it for a lower price. Oh, that was me. Yeah, that was me for that Sergeant Slaughter no name. Yes, yes, the old no name. Uh, Very good. All right, well done. All right, up next is Fig Preview and Review. It's time to review a fig from today or the past. Which will it be? Stay tuned to find out. Now, boys, I'm not going to lie. Jack's Superstars Series Three. I reckon this is when, when I found out who was getting, who was being released in this set. I reckon this is what got me hooked on collecting again because this line for me um, hit home. It was just like, wow, all these legends finally once again are coming out uh, after my, after the classic days of the Hasbro. So, in this set, boys, we had Million Dollar Man. Ted DiBiase, and I'm pretty sure from memory he come with a his belt, I think. Jake the Snake come with obviously his snake and, and the bag. Superfly Jimmy Snooker, he just come in, uh, he just come as is. Brett the Hitman Hart. Now this is from WrestleMania eight when he versed Roddy Roddy Piper. Uh, Ultimate Warrior, great Ultimate Warrior figure, and the Undertaker. Yeah, very cool. Great set. Great set. Jake was a classic. I thought the snake was a bit too small, but that's you know, um, Jack's Jack didn't really <laughs> Jack didn't really care about uh, sizing back then. Uh, but overall, boys, I'm going to pick. I honestly can't split the Ultimate Warrior or Bret Hart. They were just amazing figures when they first 
first were released. What do you reckon? Uh, you can go first if you like, Bradley. Uh, I feel like The Undertaker is very underrated. I think it's a great figure for what was released then. I think it was back in 2004. Just yeah. the, the extra, extra detail on uh, his cape and, you know, his, his attire and sort of stuff. I just, I don't know. Personally, that was just my my pick of that bunch. And you know what, what I'm going to... Oh, you go, James. Yeah, what? so what... Like, I do remember Undertaker as this character, like that, this type of Undertaker. What era, the, what year was that? The, the Ministry the Undertaker. That's it. Was that early 2000s? Uh, right, I, I say no, oh, no. Oh, it'd probably be like yeah, end nineteen ninety nine <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah, well, really okay. two thousand and one, he was the biker taker. So uh, yes, and, he um, was. Yeah, because I've been watching a fair bit of the invasion stuff at the moment. That's what I'm sort of going back through and watching. And he was biker taker through the invasion. Yeah. Um, so it either was it before that or was it after that? I think it was before that, mate. You're probably talking 98, 99. Then. Yeah, yeah. I, that, he was definitely, yeah, like, I reckon. Because then he went away, didn't he? He went away for about a year. Oh, did he? Okay. Okay. So I think he had an injury or a back operation or something. And he sort of went away for a bit and then just came back. Um, for me, and this is going to be very controversial, uh, my favorite of that is Superfly Jimmy Snooker. Yeah, it's a great figure. So, uh, a great I'm figure. actually, after seeing that figure, I want it. I want to go. I'm going to look for it tonight. So, okay. um, uh, I, I don't have a Superfly in my collection other than my Hasbro, mm. which is not a yep. great Hasbro. So um, I'm going to have a look for that one and see if I can find it nice and cheap and loose and uh, might add that to my collection as well. I like a Jax figure. I'm, uh, I, I think that they're very underrated. Didn't oh, I reckon, I reckon they go up in value. Yeah, didn't, didn't Million Dollar Man come with... Uh, he came with his, obviously, his Million Dollar Belt, but didn't he come with um, some money, yes. his, his own printed money yes. as well? Yes. But it was, it was yeah. very oversized or something for, for, uh, for the action no, figure. I thought it was okay. Yeah, he did, he did oh. come with money. He did come with money. It was great. Something cool to get with the yeah, action figure back then. Very good. Very his good. bodyguard, Virgil. All right, oh, yeah. so, uh, let's move back into Q&A. Let's go. Let's go. Now, boys, sad but true, there is no questions, but I've got a question for, for, for the both of you. And I think we'll wrap it up after that, eh? Hit me. My question to you guys is, in terms of figures that you wish were released, okay, first, here's his two-part question, right? First part is, what's your favourite toy line, what wrestling figure line? Chris, yours is Hasbro's, right? Ever. Ever. Hasbro. Bradley? Mine, mine would have to be Mattel, obviously. Mattel. All right, I'll start with you. <laughs> what top what top three figures from the Mattel line do you believe that they need to make of a certain wrestler that hasn't been released yet? Oh, that is a tough question. Uh, well, see, it depends on... I guess it, in, in the end, it's all my opinion, but obviously there's a lot of different versions of a Rey Mysterio that you could want a... No, nah, you, can't, you can't say Rey. You can't say... You got, just someone that you go, why haven't they not made him or her? That's a really difficult question because, yeah, I, I, I honestly, I can't get an answer straight out for you. I just feel like they've done enough that, you know, you there's obviously a, a bit of your newbies that are coming through that you want thing, but Legends-wise, I can't put my own mind on anyone. We'll go newbies. Um, what newbies would you would you do? They need to add. Oh, there'll be a few of the NXT newbies that are coming through. Um, you got Braun Breaker. That would be a great figure that they haven't done yet. Um, in his in his probably his Steiner brother. Um, any any of attire that he's done of his Steiner brothers kind of thing. Uh, something along those lines of you know whatever new wrestlers are coming through. Uh, an yep. updated Vince McMahon would be nice. Oh um, yeah. yeah, an old old skinny. Wrinkly Vince McMahon, I'd love to see in figure form. Um, it comes comes with a legal aid that he 
yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any anything like that would be nice, but yeah, I, I can't pinpoint something in particular on those. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna add to I'm gonna add to that, mate. From a legend's point of view, I reckon a Mountie like they Mattel should be releasing a Mountie. As Jax did back yeah. in the day. I reckon uh, I'm trying uh, to... Rougeau would be happy to give away his rights too if he got a big pay deal. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say the Killer Bees. The Killer Bees and the Mattel figures would be fantastic. And one more, one more, one more, one more. Beverly Brothers. No, I'm going to try to avoid saying them, Chris. I always say that. I think <laughs> like a Power and Glory or an Orient Express would be right. unreal. From Actually, our area, Chris. Going, going on the legends though, would you not as a as a proud Australian, would you not want Outback Jack as an elite form figure? I, I think because he's Australian, but to be honest with you, I've never seen him wrestle and I yeah. he was a bit before my time. But yeah, I look fantastic. I think that'll be he'd be in high demand, right? Because he was quite popular back in the day. I believe look, so, uh, yeah. I want to see a Ken Patera figure. <laughs> it is uh Richard Simmons hair. Yeah. Big buzzball hair. Uh, I'd love to have a Ken Patera. I think no one's ever said those words before. I'd love to have a Ken Patera. Patera. Any Patera. Uh, in case you're watching too, probably not, I don't think Ken's still alive, but uh, if you are watching Ken, well done. Um, nice. For me, I think okay. Mattel. I'm going to change yours up. Oh, sorry, oh. Mattel. Go for it. Sorry, no, go for it. You go. Well, I was just going to say, um, I'd love them to redo Demolition and actually have maybe a three pack with uh, Axe Smash and Crush. As uh, like the um, Heyman uh, Brock Lesnar three pack that came out was coming out from Amazon. Have a three yeah. pack demolition, even a demolition with Mister Fuji. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. Mister Fuji haven't hasn't hasn't they haven't released one, have they? So, what was my question, James? So you're so similar to Brad's, but you, yours is Hasbro's. We're going to change yours up a bit, Chris, because we've we've discussed this before. Out of all the toy lines, let's just, let's just go heels and faces, or even Sean and G's line. What 80s tag teams do you want to see released? Uh, well, I don't want to say Beverly Brothers. I would like to see a Twin Towers tag team. Even though yeah. the Boss Man and Akeem were uh, in their attires for the Hasbro line, it'd be cool to get them with Slick. Um, and <sighs> they did, Akeem had a few different uh, ponchos that he used to like to wear, so I'd like to see that. Yeah. Um, Akeem's still alive too, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, like you think about wrestlers, you think about who's alive and who's not. And yeah. I came a huge unit, and then he's still yeah. going strong in his 60s. Yeah. And then you look at somebody like Mr. Perfect. And, yeah. Big, um, big, Mac, big Macs over drugs any day, mate. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, who else? There's so many. Like, uh, I'd love to see the uh, Barbarian and Haku as a. Yeah, tag that'd, be good. that'd be good. Yeah, that'd um, be a cool, a cool line. Survivor Series uh, three packs or four packs? Survivor Series four packs with yeah. the teams would be awesome. Yeah. Make it happen. Yeah. Mate, the uh, four pack of Ultimate Warrior, Legion of Doom, and Texas Tornado. Wow. Yeah. What a team. <laughs> what a team. Jeez. That is the best idea you've ever had. Thank you, mate. I'm pretty proud of myself for that one. You say a lot of dumb stuff, James, but that is, <laughs> uh, like, that is gold. That is absolute yes. gold. Yeah, so we've got, we got, we got to get on to somebody now. We, we've got an idea. This is a yeah. team idea. Yeah. We can make a lot of money from this idea. Yeah. And we'll take over distribution because Mattel, no doubt, will uh, <laughs> stuff it somehow. Yeah. Well, you've got um, uh, Von Eric has a contract with the Power Town figure line. So yes, he, he yeah. stayed off. So he, they're obviously willing to make more figures. Legion yeah. of Doom have got the contract with Asylum yeah. um, and uh, Ultimate Warriors still has his Legends contract, so there's no reason it can't yeah. happen. Yeah. What are, what are the – what was Hulk Hogan saying? It was Hulk Hogan, Boss Man, Demolition. Tugboat. Oh, that was a different one. Uh, it was Hogan, Boss Man, Tugboat, and – Yeah, I think it was Jack the Snake. Yeah, it was. That'd yeah. be a good one. That'd Doing be a great right. one. Yeah, tugboat Very good. far out. <laughs> Very good. The golden era of wrestling, boys. Definitely. Absolutely. 
Oh, I reckon we'll wrap it up there, Jamesy. That wraps it up, boys. Great show. Thank you, boys, once again. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for those who are listening and downloading this episode. We greatly appreciate it. Please check us out on all our social media platforms. We've been a bit slack, I know, but times are busy. Uh, but we'll we'll get back onto it. Uh, find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and always use the hashtag The Hunt Never Ends. You know why, mate? Never ends. Never, ends. never bloody ends. Criminal Thanks all. Is my collection. Two more pieces, three more pieces, four more pieces. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Cheers.